Hello, I have here two empty Coors Light beer cans and Coors has a, a device on the uh, can that uh, allows one to determine whether the beer is uh, cold or not. And I'm going to illustrate this by adding cold water to this can. And you can see a dramatic change. Uh, and this, this particular can shows a blue coloration. And this blue coloration is due to a thermochromic reaction. Um, thermo, meaning temperature, and heat, uh, causes a color change. Chromic means color. And um, the particular um, molecule that is involved here is something called crystal violet. <coughs> and it has a blue color in slow temperature form and is colorless in the high temperature form. The, the reaction involves some acidification uh, in, in its acidic form. Uh, it is um, blue and in a high temperature form that occurs at a, uh, when you warm it up, uh, it is colorless. So uh, this is a nice example of a thermochromic reaction that can be used uh, to tell you whether or not uh, something is cold. And I'm going to give some more examples of it uh, in this video and maybe talk a little bit about the chemistry. Okay, I have a couple other examples I'd like to show you. Um, these cars are very uh, intriguing. Uh, they're uh, not as uh, readily available today as they were uh, a few years ago, but uh, if you take this car and put it into a uh, cold solution, ice water, you can see it changes color. And then if I put it in warm water, I won't put it all the way in, uh, it changes back to the original color. An example of a thermochromic uh, process and uh, another example that I'd like to show you involves uh, thermochromic cups. And here I have a green cup, a yellow cup, and a pink cup. Um, don't confuse the color of the cup with the thermochromic material. Uh, the thermochromic material goes from a low temperature form, which has color, and a high temperature form which is colorless. People don't like to see cups that are colorless so they put a dye in there that doesn't change color as well as the thermochromic material. So let's add some I'm going to add some cold water to the yellow cup ice water and I'm going to do the same thing for the pink cup. Now obviously there are two different kinds of dyes in here but the same basic process occurs. The, uh, the yellow cup turns green at the low temperature and uh, at the high temperature that particular dye is colorless but of course the cup has a yellow color uh, that uh, doesn't involve thermochromism. And the uh, pink cup turns kind of a violet uh, purple color uh, on the bottom where it's cold and uh, you can see that if I uh, I'll pour the water out and um, warm it up with my hands it will change back to as I said colorless but of course there's a residual uh, yellow color. So these are nice examples of thermochromic materials uh, that you see around uh, a lot. They're very intriguing and uh, in the last part of the video I'm going to uh, discuss uh, some of the chemistry involved in this process. Okay, well here is the molecular structure of the, the uh, high temperature form of uh, crystal violet lactone. And you can see that there are, well first of all the, uh, the, the gray atoms are carbon, the white atoms are uh, hydrogen, the red atoms are oxygen, and the blue atoms are nitrogen. And you can see that one of the oxygens is bonded to the central carbon atom in the high temperature form. But if the temperature is dropped and there's some acidification, uh, we get a new form of the molecule. 
and so the, the, there's a protonation of this oxygen and uh, there's no bond from the oxygen to the central carbon and as a result the three rings interact more and the change in the electronic structure of the molecule causes a color change and it's in this low temperature form it's kind of a bluish color so um, this gives you a little uh, flavor of the chemistry involved it's uh, rather uh, involves micro encapsulation and uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, technology involved and you can go on the web and get a little clearer picture of what's going on but uh, thermochromism uh, is an interesting process and it has many uh, interesting uses so I thank you for your attention and uh, I'll see you next time